Hi, welcome back. Today we will be talking about pediatric airway anatomy and physiology. The pediatric airway anatomy is different from an adult airway. The neonatal and infant epiglottis is more U in shape in comparison to an adult which is relatively flat. The omega shaped epiglottis engages with the soft palate forming a central tunnel for airway and lateral sites for food. This special variation allows an infant to breathe and swallow simultaneously. Neonates are also obligate nasal breathers up to the age of 2 to 5 months. The head of a pediatric patient is larger in relation to the body size with a prominent occiput which causes the neck to flex and obstruct the airway when they lie down flat. This can easily be corrected using a shoulder roll to obtain neutral head position and open the airway. The pediatric oral cavity has a larger tongue with a shorter mandible. Infant larynx is also higher in the neck at the level of C2 to 3. It descends during infancy to C6 and 7 by adulthood. The pediatric airway is described as a funnel shape where the narrowest part is at the level of the cricoid and subglottis, whereas in an adult, it is at the level of the epiglottis and the airway is described as cylindrical in shape. There are two airway dynamics that we need to understand. The first is Peirce's law, where airway resistance is inversely proportional to the fourth power of its radius. What this means is a reduction of 50% of the radius will reach a 16-fold increase to the resistance of airflow. The next principle to know is Bernoulli's principle. An increased airflow velocity will result in negative pressure on the walls of the airway, leading to an inward collapse of the airway. The pediatric airway is less rigid in comparison to an adult airway. Hence, if there is a narrowing in the airway, it will cause a turbulent in airflow which increases the velocity and decreases the pressure within the lumen, causing a collapse of the airway and further narrowing the airway. Both these compounding factors causes the pediatric airway to deteriorate much quicker than an adult airway. In the exam, you may be asked how would you approximate the endotracheal tube size for children over the age of one year for a cuff tube. The formula to calculate the appropriate internal diameter size of a cuff tube is H divided by 4 plus 3.5. This graph shows the appropriate uncuffed endotracheal tube size according to age and body weight. For children premature less than 1 kg, we use 2.5 mm. Infant between 1 to 3.5 kg, we use a 3 mm endotracheal tube. 3.5 mm endotracheal tube is used for infant more than 3.5 kg up to the age of 6 months. And from 7 months to 1 year, we use a 4 mm tube. After that, we use the formula of age in years divided by 4 plus 4 to estimate the internal diameter uncuffed endotracheal tube size. Thank you very much for listening. In the next talk, we'll be discussing on foreign body in the ears, nose and throat.